Hey guys, welcome to the next tutorial of ethical hacking and penetration testing via Kali Linux. So even if you knew how to go ahead and secure your Wi-Fi network and you have already done so, you probably will find all the encryption acronyms a little bit puzzling. So today you will uh, go ahead, I will go ahead and highlight the differences between encryption standards like WEP, WPA and WPA2 and why it matters which acronym you slap on your home Wi-Fi network is more important and later on I'll be teaching you how we could go ahead and try to bypass these securities. So uh, to start with first there are different types of securities recent technologies have 802.11b, 11g most commonly used are 11v that's up to 11 mbps and 81b, 11b and 11g are uh, not that famous but they're used in very large co companies because they have extreme high speed. Uh, 80211B uses security techniques like WEP to make the network secure but WEP is not that secure uh, as per my experience and not only my experience even if you go and check on the uh, internet they will it's very easy to go and crack the WEP encryption that's why. And finally we have the IEEE that came up to uh, 802.11x standards for wireless ethernet. So let's go ahead and take a look at the different types of authentication that we have. The first one is WEP that's and after that we have WPA, WPA2 and 802.1x authentication but I won't be teaching you much about 802.1x because uh, normally people only go ahead and use WPA2 no matter what kind of organization they are in. So you might be wondering why does it all matter? You did what you were told to, you logged onto your router after you purchased it and plugged it in for the first time and set a password. What does it matter what the little acronym next to the security encryption standard you choose was? As it turns out, it matters a whole lot as is the case with all encryption standards. Increasing computer power and exposed vulnerabilities have rendered older standards at risk. It's your network, it's your data. And if someone hijacks your network for the illegal hi hi uh, let's say hijinks, uh, it will be the police knocking on your door. And if you have some kind of organization, then they can do use that to gain access to confidential information and then later corporate espionage. So understanding the differences between encryption protocols and implementing the most advanced one for your router can go ahead and help you uh, increase your security or upgrading it if it cannot support current generation's secure standards. So that is the difference between offering someone easy access to your home and network and setting secure. So let's start with these four types of authentication. Since the late 1990s, um, Wi-Fi security algorithms have undergone multiple upgrades with outright depreciation of older algorithms and significant revision to upgrade newer algorithms. So if you go to look at your history of Wi-Fi security, it will serve to highlight both uh, what's out there right now and what should you should you why you should avoid the older standards such as WEP. So the I'll just go to the next. Okay, so this is what a WEP looks like, and uh, WEP that is for the full form is Wide Equivalent Privacy. WEP is most widely used Wi-Fi security algorithm in the world. Uh, that is uh, a function of age, backwards com compatibility, and uh, the fact that it appears first in encryption types selection menus in many router control panels. WEP was ratified as a Wi-Fi security standard in the September 1999 and the first versions of WEP were not particularly strong. Even for that time, they were released because uh, United States restrictions on the export of various cryptographic technology led to manufacturers restricting the devices to only 64-bit encryption. Whereas this was a, uh, not a 64, this was only a 64-bit encryption. When restrictions were lifted, it was increased to 128-bit despite of the introduction of 256-bit WEP encryption. So 128-bit remains one of the most common implementation standards. Despite revisions to the algorithms and increased uh, key size in the WEP, over time numerous security flaws were discovered in the WEP standard as computing power increased it became very easier and easier to exploit them. As early there was some exploits that were floating around by 2005 that the FBI from the United States gave public demonstration in an effort to increase the awareness of WEP's encryption. So WEP are not commonly used uh, that much these days and despite various improvements, uh, workarounds and other attempts to shore up the WEP system, it remains highly vulnerable and systems that rely on WEP should be upgraded or if security upgrades are not an option, replaced. The Wi-Fi Alliance officially retired WEP in 2004. So I'll just go ahead and explain you the process as to how WEP encryption looks works like. 
WEP encryption is specified by IEEE 802.11 for encryption and authentication. So this means that the standard describes WEP as having two main parts. The first being the authentication part for uh, that uh, authentication part and the second being the encryption part. The goals of WEP are access control achieved by preventing unauthorized user for ga from gaining access because they do not have the correct WEP key. Privacy is obtained by using the WEP key to encrypt the wireless LAN data streams and only those with the correct WEP can decrypt them. So this figure will show you an uh, idea of, as to how exactly WEP encryption works like. The encryption process used by uh, the WEP is uh, uh, Rivest Cipher 4 that's called as RC4. This is also an integrity algorithm CRC32 which is used uh, on the plain text to create the integrity check value that's ICV which is used to protect them from tampering or unauthorized data modification and this figure will show you exactly what uh, de decryption of algorithm looks like. So yeah that's how it works. So now coming back to our next part would be the WPA encryption which is the full form is Wi-Fi protected access and you all must have already guessed WPA2 that's Wi-Fi protected access 2. WPA access was the Wi-Fi alliance's direct response and replacement to the increased vulnerabilities of WEP standard. It was formally adopted in 2003 I can say a year before WEP was officially retired. The most common wireless protocol, wireless protected access configuration was is the WPA PS key that is the pre-shared key. The keys used by WPA are 256-bit, uh, a significant increase over the 64 and 128-bit keys used in the WEP system. And some of the significant changes implemented with WPA included a message integrity to determine if the attacker had captured or altered packets passed between the access point and the client and the temporal key integrity protocol that's TKIP. TKIP employs a per packet key system that was uh, radically uh, more secure and fixed I can say than that was used in uh, WEP system. TKIP was later superseded by AES that's advanced encryption protocol which is used nowadays. So despite what a significant improvement okay just let me go back okay so despite what they say about the improvement done over uh, WPA over WEP, the ghost of WEP still haunted WPA. That's TKIP which is a core component of WPA was designed to be easily rolled out via firmware upgrades onto system existing uh, with WEP enabled devices. So as such it had to recycle certain elements used in the WEP system which ultimately were exploited. Again it again became uh, some kind of backdoor for hackers to go ahead and gain access into that. So WPA like its predecessor WEP it has been shown via both proof of concept and public demonstration to be very vulnerable uh, to intrusion. Interestingly the process by which WPA is usually breached is not a direct attack on WPA algorithm but by attacks on a simply better system that was rolled out with WPA and uh, Wi-Fi protected access that's WPS which was designed to make it easy to link devices to modern access points. And to be more precise if I tell you how it works WPA that's Wi-Fi protected access it is a subset of 802.11i security protocol and it was used to uh, improve encryption and authentication capabilities to the IE uh, wired uh, equivalent privacy that's the WEP protocol. The 802.11 work group has been developing a security standard that's 802.11i. The decision was made to take uh, the stable parts of the upcoming 802.11i standard and implement them into a standard that would provide wireless security until the 802.11i standard was finalized. So the standard takes these six elements of the 802.11i protocol and puts them together to increase the security provided by WEP. And finally we have the WPA2 which is quite different and the most secured till date but I won't say that it's that secure because still uh, if, even though if it, uh, no matter how secure it is it is still crackable but not as much as the WPE uh, or WPA or WPA uh, WEP.